on channel 44 in the 5 gigahertz band. And here is our access point here, um, the guest access point that we know is in the server room, that's on channel 11. If we go over here on the channel summary, again you can see the channels that are being utilized. And one of the things to note here is that one of train signals surrounding people who are also resident in this building are on channel 2. And that potentially is a slight problem because that's not only going to interfere with train signals access points on channel 1, but it's also going to interfere with their access points that's on channel 6. So to do the walk around, what I want to do is I want to look at the spectrum view. And I've set up a spectrum view for the 2.4 gigahertz band because we've seen that train signal are currently using the 2.4 gigahertz band. But we're also looking at deploying Jord mode access points. And over here, I want to look at the 5 gigahertz band. The last thing I want to point out to you before I start my walk around, if I go back here to the devices view, notice down here that I've actually set it to actually capture the last 12 hours. And so this way I can actually see what's actually changing and not lose anything that I've previously captured. And I've also hit the record button so I can look at this capture a little bit later on as well. So let's set ourselves to the spectrum view. So let's start our walk around. So that's interesting. I'm already starting to see um, a Bluetooth Pico net. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for changes of activity. If I see a sudden spike, sudden rapid uh, signal, then I'll stop and investigate it. What I'm seeing at the moment is pretty consistent. They continue to transmit um, on the same channels. The utilization of the channel is not changing very much and periodically I'll switch over to the 5 gigahertz channel to take a look there as well but I'm not seeing any utilization on the 5 gigahertz channel even train signal is not transmitting on the 5 gigahertz channel at this point in time I'm probably just seeing a beacon signal and that's all so yeah so this is looking really promising that we've got a fairly static environment at this point, not seeing any unusual sources. Everything is wireless LAN with just that one Bluetooth um, device that I can hear. And again, periodically I just switch across, check that 5 gigahertz channel. Yeah, train signal seems to be the only one in this neighborhood using 5 gigahertz, so that's very promising for train signal going forward. We should be able to get a 40 megahertz channel for them quite easily. This is looking very good. So I'm not seeing any major interference sources. I sometimes see the duty channel jumping up to 100%, but it goes straight back down. So this wireless LAN is not heavily utilized at this point. I'm seeing both the business access points and the one for the visitor actually being occupied, which suggests to me that employees are actually connecting to the visitor as well as the employee access points, which is not always good. And really surprised I'm not seeing any traffic up in the 5 gigahertz band. So that's an interesting one. And again, we are doing this during normal business hours, so we should get a good reflection of how these access points are being used. But I'm not seeing any spikes or any major changes that's going to cause me to stop and investigate an interference source. I'm not seeing rogue access points coming online. Um, these do look like the neighbor's access points that I'm seeing. So when I'm setting up my spectrum plots, I always like to set up the real-time plot, obviously, uh, so I can feel the traffic as it's changing. But I also like to set up the maximum, so I can see what the maximum signal strength has been. That kind of gives me a boundary line for looking at the fluctuations. So yeah, very, very consistent here. Really good news for train signal. 
And again, I like to pause occasionally and just check that five gigahertz band. And you can see there's just no traffic on it. You just see an occasional transmission, which I suspect is just the beacon. And again, both access points on the same channel, which of course is a problem. And then I switch over here back to the 2.4 gigahertz band. That's where you're seeing more traffic. Pretty consistent. So I've done the outside and I'm now walking down the center corridors and I'm walking past the kitchen and it's around lunchtime and I can see that the microwave oven has come on so we're getting that signal there and you're starting to see on the sweep spectrogram you're starting to see a much heavy load on the center channel and that is being caused by that microwave oven. So this is quite interesting because if you remember earlier, we noted here that there was an access point a little bit outside of the kitchen and here the microwave ovens. And this access point is actually on channel 6, whereas this one over here is on channel 1. So what we might want to do is actually advise the customer to switch those because this microwave when this one's transmitting is completely going over channel 6 here. So something to be aware of. So that was interesting. Let's keep going. Good. See still that microwave still going. And look what a difference it's making to that spectrum band. Wow. Well, we're all done. So let's talk about what we observed. We we're looking for sources of interference and the only interference we saw was from other wireless lands that were surrounding train signal and those wireless lands were all in the 2.4 gigahertz band so only train signal was operating in both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band so we know that there's going to be some interference if we continue to provide 2.4 but we know the 5 gigahertz band is going to be completely clear and so we're going to be able to easily deploy our Cisco access points using 40 megahertz channels getting up to the higher data rates up in the 5 gigahertz band. The only other source of interference we saw was the microwave oven. And so when we're deploying our access points near that kitchen, we want to avoid channel 6. We want to make sure that we're using maybe channel 1 and 11 in the 2.4 gigahertz band. And of course, that's not going to interfere at all with our operations in the 5 gigahertz band. So we found clean channels and we've looked for sources of interference. And so we are done with the layer 1 site survey. So I shall be back for the layer 2 site survey in a few lessons. So a few terms you should be familiar with. The device finder. This is one of the modes of operations of the Cisco Spectrum Expert and is used to help me find sources of interference both in the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band. A rogue access point. That's an access point that's not authorized by the enterprise. So it's operating without any knowledge that the IT department within the enterprise know about. And so it can cause disruption to the corporate Wi-Fi network. A card bus. So the Cisco Spectrum Expert comes in a card bus format. You slot that card bus into your PC and you slot it in through a PCM CIA card slot. And if you have an older computer, that will work fine. If you've got one of the newer computers, then you'll have to find an adapter so that you can plug that card through the adapter and then into your PC because not many PCs today, if any, have a PCM CIA card slot. And the last one is a Yagi antenna. So this is a form of a directional antenna and if you want to replace the Omni antenna on your Cisco Spectrum Expert, using a Yagi antenna is the best way to go because they're fairly inexpensive 
and highly directional. So if you're going to use a directional antenna to try and help find sources of interference, I'd well recommend you use a Yagi antenna. So what did we cover in this lesson? We started with a site survey discussion. I talked about how actually to conduct a layer one site survey. And we talked about how to resolve interference problems. And we talked about the expected output from a layer one site survey. We also touched on the Cisco Spectrum Expert tool. And in particular, I showed you the device finder capability that would help me find sources of interference. We then went on to do a couple of demonstrations and you got to see a video of me conducting a layer one site survey. And again, I was using the Cisco Spectrum Expert tool and we not only used that tool to do the layer one site survey, but so of course in the train signal headquarters that we saw, the source of interference that I found was in the kitchen and it was a microwave oven. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. It was certainly a lot of fun for me. Um, Thank you for watching.